Greetings from Grace Evangelical Free Church in Afton. We are a brotherhood. We are a family. And uh, it's good to worship the living God together. Wherever you go around the world, God is working and has his people. And uh, appreciated the songs and the uh, music. And you know what? I love being a sub. Because we aren't supposed to get the glory anyway. Psalm 15, 115 says, uh, Unto thy name, unto thy name, O Lord, be glory and honor. So the biggest encouragement in my life, that God uses people that are subs. <laughs> really, they do. I think one of my favorite psalm verses is, uh, God helps the simple. <laughs> Another one is, Paul says, When I am weak, then I am strong. Uh, so, I think there's great hopes for subs, and the subs rose to the occasion today, and uh, the focus is not on us anyway, right? I mean, the focus is to give God glory, and God honor, and God worship, and God praise, for he's worthy. He never said that we're worthy. In fact, that's what redemption is about, <laughs> is coming to, the church is made up of the unworthy. I tell people, I say, the, the first prerequisites people say, can I join the church? I says, well, the first, first prerequisites for joining a church is the unworthiness of the applicant. Think about it. That is the prerequisite for salvation, is the unworthiness of the applicant. So we make a lot of ado about all of us and what's going on. And, you know, and it's good. God has given his people to encourage and strengthen and be a blessing to each other. And that's great but let's not get caught up in the one and others per se and get caught up in the one who is the one who is our savior and the one we celebrated this Christmas time. We're going to be this morning in uh, John uh, chapter 1. It's actually a Christmas text which this morning we're going to we're going to read the first 18 verses and that's where we're going to where we're actually going to be. But the, the message is titled, From the Cradle to the Cross. From the Cradle to the Cross. So we're, we've had a great time at Christmas time. We focused on the coming of Jesus Christ. We focused on uh, the shepherds. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room, and heaven and nature sing. Uh, we three kings of Orion, on, on and on, we celebrate the person and the work of Christ, and we should. It's all wonderful, but that's not where it stops. It's a continuum, and today we're going to look at this continuum, and I'll tell you, we're going on a ride. <laughs> What do you mean going on a ride? We are going back before the beginning. Now, body slam your brain on that one. Boom. Before the, it doesn't compute with us. We're finite beings. We're locked in time and space. But the writer of John points out right at the beginning of his book. <laughs> Right at the beginning, you'd think there'd be a little warm-up. Oh, no. This is the warm-up. He starts right out, and he sets the stage of history, past, present, future. And he begins to unfold it before our eyes in God's great work of sending his son to be his revealer to us as to who God is and what he's done to be our savior, our redeemer, our Lord, our conqueror, our friend, all of it. And just usually when your life is discouraged and you're getting bumped and jostled around, you lose your frame. You lose your frame of reference. And John squarely sets out the boundaries for the frame that we're working in. Okay? So that's where we're going to be in John chapter 1. We're going to be talking about who Christ is. I go back. 
I had my old hymnal with me. I love, I love the praise hymns because they lift our hearts to worship God himself. I love the old hymns. And there's one old hymn. Today, what we're doing is we are filling in who Jesus Christ is. Now, and we'll see, because of the vastness of who Christ is, we have a lot of learning to do. A lot of learning. When you get somebody that kind of, kind of acts like they, got it, they know all, everything about everything, just be a little bit nervous. <laughs> because they, we need room for great mystery. In saying that, we have huge revelation that God has given us in the person and the work of Jesus Christ that we can hang on to solidly, securely, and eternally. But in John, he's going he's gonna to show us who Jesus is. And the, the, the hymn is, uh, Who is he at yonder stall at whose feet the shepherds fall? And that's the Christmas hymn, starting out at the cradle. Who is he that shepherds are falling down to? Who is he that bad guy, royal men travel hundreds, maybe thousands, miles, and they didn't have a clue. They were Jewish. <laughs> They were coming, and they get in Jerusalem, and the, the people there don't have a clue what's going on. Duh. We've come from thousands of miles, Baghdad or wherever. We've come to worship the king. King? <laughs> There's a king? It said Herod. And the people of Jerusalem, although they should not have been clueless, they were. And then they know where to look. Where do they look? Herod goes to the priest and he says, King? <laughs> the scriptures say something about a king. Where, where is he? They're looking for him. These guys, what guys? These yo-yos out here that have come on camels and they're, they're what? They're looking for a king. And we've noticed this huge, this light guiding, and they said, something's up. Oh, and right away they say, oh, it's uh, Micah 5, 2. Out of you, O Bethlehem of Judea. I mean, God printed it right down 500 and some years beforehand so they wouldn't miss it. And uh, that's where he's coming. Who is he? Who is he? And... Uh, John starts right out in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. They pretty much cover the life or the, the birth and a lot of that coverage for the first years of Christ's life. But in John, he starts out, we'll see. He gives the big picture of who Jesus is and fills in a lot of the huge details to complement Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Okay, let's take a minute to pray. Our great Father, this morning we come to you with great gratitude of sending a Redeemer, a Savior, your Son, your eternal Son. And what a gift. Every gift ever given, all tallied together, could not measure, could not even tip one ounce of a scale as to the worth of our Lord Jesus Christ, your son. We acknowledge this morning that he is our redeemer and that your plan was eternal and it's continuing to work from before eternity on up until you redeem your people and bring them with you to glory and how grateful we are this morning. Open our eyes that we behold wonderful things of who your son is, what he's done for us, and help us to continue 
as we've done this morning with the privilege of worship and celebration and joying in all you've done for us. By the Holy Spirit, illuminate our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. That's John the Baptist, by the way. He came, at a, he came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies concerning him. He cries out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me has surpassed me, because he was before me. From the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but God the one and only who is at the Father's right, who is at the Father's side, has made him known. Whew. In the beginning was the word. Greek logos. It means actually it means a lot. But to boil it down, it means the one who reveals, not reflects, reveals God's essence. What a plan. I mean, how many theories are there of what God is like and who he is and what he does? And I mean, you know, as many as people on the face of the earth. And who can say, unless, unless God himself has left us an absolute truth in our reality that can, we can say, that's what God's like. And uh, he's saying, in the beginning was the word. The exact, Hebrews puts it this way. It's, I'm going to do, I have the King James, sorry about that, but in sundry ways, in various manners, God spoke in times past unto the Hebrew fathers through the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And in these last days, when Jesus Christ came to earth, born in Bethlehem, it says, he came and he sent Christ, who is the exact representation of his person, showing fully his glory. And actually goes, I said, and now he's set down at the right hand of God, which is completed work. But he's the exact 
revealer of who God is. I had a nephew one time, and he says, I wish you could know what God is like. I said, well, you can. I mean, he, 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 isn't, he isn't hiding in a closet. He isn't the total other, although he is other. He has chosen to reveal himself to humanity. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room. He has given, and what better way than in humanity? Figure that one out. The hymn writers, everybody is mystified. The big right, they say, God contracted to a span, incomprehensibly made man. What child is this? Who angels sing? What, what child is this? This is the word who was with God and who is God. I mean, how much time could you spend on just the logos? We're not doing that. I want to get through this, this, this section, but think about that. Pre-existent son of God wasn't, didn't become Jesus Christ at his birth. He was forever the son of God means that at least, at least, and John will fill us in on the rest, this whole triune God, the Trinity, that in chapters 14, 15, and 16, you get the third person of the Trinity. Mystery, yes. One God. One in essence. Three persons. And what a plan. <laughs> what a plan. What a plan. He, he sends his son to take on humanity to identify with human beings like us in our mess, yet without sin. Totally human. He takes on humanity. Why? Why would Christ step out of eternity? Why would he set aside the worship and adoration and praise and honor and glory, everything bowing Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Highest esteem, there's nothing esteemed higher than he is. And set that all aside. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son to do a work of redemption and set history on course for the saving work of his son. To save who? Those that are kings and princesses, those that have money and power and influence. Well, he does save those. But it was shepherds <laughs> that were rejoicing. It was the low yo-yos, the subs. <laughs> they, they were joy to the world, praising. I mean, you know. How are, we going to make our, how are we going to make our sheep payment next week? I don't know. We're busted. And on the scene comes a picture that's as huge as eternity. And these people are filled with hope. It's bigger than just the moment by moment by moment by moment by moment grind. Keep it in the frame. Ah, yes, life can be a pain in the tail. Straight up. Don't lose the big picture. In the middle of that pain and sorrow, you can rejoice in Christ, your Savior, <laughs> who has set his love upon you and redeemed you by his precious blood. I don't know. I have, I have, I'm privileged. I have people that love me. You know, and that's good. Beautiful. But if everybody kicked me next to the curb, there's no greater love than the love of God in Jesus Christ. If everybody kicks me to the curb, I'll be crying like a baby, whining. I'll probably be over at your house saying, oh, man, woe is me. And you say, oh, this is bad, this is bad. And then we'll begin to get the bigger frame. God, you have a plan in this. You can even use your son's death on the cross to the praise of your glory in your eternal plan. 
put it in the context, Christ doesn't need to stay in the manger. <laughs> That's my point. He's not just a nice guy. He is the eternal Son of God in flesh. Um, so we're going to transition a little bit. Nor I thought the first hymn we sang today, the first uh, praise song, covered these things. If you'll notice, because I've been digesting on this, you'll notice creation, you'll notice light, you'll notice uh, life. And the first, the first hymn we sang really covered those themes. You remember them? What was it? Somebody get us going on that. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I want to sing your praises. Because you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. Now, from the fun to earth, show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Doesn't that cover it? That's the big picture. Lord. And what does that do to us? Lord, I want to sing your praises. And it's the ministry of the Holy Spirit taking the truths of who Christ is written in the scripture, bringing it to our hearts and pressing praise and worship out of us in whatever circumstance in life. I'm sure circumstances in old Jerusalem weren't that great for a lot of those folks at that time. Being under Roman rule they, and, and having, oh, talk, we got tax time coming up. They had the tax guy there. In fact, God used the tax guy to, to bring him down to Bethlehem of Judea. Anyway, it's an amazing deal. And uh, God is with his people. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Stable my ship. <laughs> stable, make my ship stable in the middle of life. Uh, so that was covered. There came a man sent from God whose name was John, and he's, he's proclaiming. That's very important because that was prophesied in the Old Testament that that was going to happen. There's going to become a forerunner of Christ, and he's going to declare him to you. They should have known all this. It wasn't something that was already sprung on them. They'd gone through... Uh, a thousand years of writing in the Old Testament, actually 1,400 years of communication from God through the prophets in the Old Testament. God was printing. and He didn't want people to miss Christ. But how many signs do you have to put up? Don't turn right here. I want to go ahead. I can go straight ahead. I like adventure. I want to go left at this turn. But God wants us to exactly know who Christ is and what he's done for us and to Glory in that. Not just know those facts in our head. That's not joying in Christ. But letting them filter from our head down into our heart. Ah, and then lift our hearts. Lord, we lift your name on high. That's why Sundays, that's why gathering together, that's why in Hebrews 10:15 it says, Don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together. But exhort one another, encourage one another. And so much more as, as you see the day approaching. Actually, we could have put another verse on that hymn, on the back, that praise song on the back, because all of God's people are going to be taken to be with him forever. And all of us people, Jesus Christ is in heaven right now in a body. That's the way it is. Isn't he the son of God? Yes. He was son of God when he was here. He didn't lay aside his deity, but that whole thing blended together in one Lord Jesus Christ, and that resurrection was real. It was a bodily resurrection, and right now he's pleading our case at the right hand of God the Father in heaven. I just want to say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Review your week. Review your attitudes. And if you don't start getting down with some thank yous and praise and, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> yeah. and he's able to sympathize with us in our faith.
failures and our weaknesses because he was tested and tempted in every area that you and I are yet without sin. He had to be sinless. And he had to be the son of God. But why? God can't die. The word is eternal. And the Son of God willingly lays aside his deity, comes and, and lives a perfect life. The moral law and character that exude out of him has to be met. How are you going to do it? There isn't a, there isn't a yo-yo down there that's going to, that's going to measure up to any part of God's glory. But God had a plan in the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Verse 14, And the Word became flesh and tabernacled, dwelt, lived, abided, stayed among us. And we beheld His glory. Glory as of the only begotten from the Father full of grace, and full of truth. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So Jesus has a body. Luke 2.52 says he grew in stature and favor with men and favor with God. He, he, he grew. He was a baby. I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Changing diapers and that was all going on. He grew up and lived a spotless life sinless life so that the just requirements of the Mosaic law that he decreed that flowed out of his nature and holiness could be met. That's why the Son of God came. Because who's going who's gonna to redeem? How am I going to get enough righteousness to get, per, to get perfect? Well, try harder. Try harder. I'm already screwed up. Harder doesn't make me not a lawbreaker. <laughs> well, if you turn over your life and work harder. I do jail ministry at Rock County Jail. And I, I mean, some of those guys, you know, they'll come into jail and, you know, that really gets their attention and, and they start to get straightened out. And even, even the law at Rock County Jail doesn't say, well, you know, we see you've changed your attitude. Well, Walk out. <laughs> no way. Perfection is the law's demand. But it gives us neither feet nor hands. <laughs> the gospel, the Christmas message in the work of Christ is a totally other thing. It bids us fly and gives us wings. <laughs> Because he is the son of man and lived a perfect life and freely. Anyway, here's the thing. I have a Christmas. Uh, at our house, we had a Christmas tree. We have an artificial one this year. The other years, we've had uh, living trees, you know. And I don't know, probably six, eight, ten years ago, I started taking the Christmas tree, you know, at, at Christmas time. And I keep it for Easter. I trim all the branches off and turn it upside down, and my grandkids, they help me nail the Jesus sign on it. And it's out in the yard at Easter time. Because, really, Christmas is a nice story, but that's only a part of the story. The drama and the vast grace and the love of God and the wisdom of God and the mighty power of God continue on to Jesus growing up. And the drama, boy, you read that, the, the Luke or Matthew, the story of Christ, and you say, <laughs> people say, well, boy, that was kind of a risky deal that God did there with Jesus. You know what I mean? Sin, his son being powerless like that. <laughs> Papa God was, he was right there every second of every moment of all of eternity. 
Mary and Joseph, they're, they're going to pay taxes. They don't have any money. <laughs> Just enough to get by. How? Hey, you better, take, you better take my son down to Egypt because Herod's out to kill him. And he did, actually. There was a great slaughter among the children under two years of age. Why? Herod was nuts. I mean, he was beyond nuts. He was a uh, manic murderer. I mean, <laughs> and he, if, if, he, if you look just wrong and he thought you were going to be uh, bucking for his throne, you were done. A couple of wives found that out, brother, I don't know. That, and there's others, but that's just what history records. Anyway, all of that to say, oh, God says, no, nah, how, Mary, how are we going to go down to Egypt? We three kings of Orient are bearing gifts. And what did they do? They bowed and they worshipped. What child is this? What? And they offered him gold and frankincense and myrrh. Thank you. <laughs> we are your servants. <laughs> we were going to Egypt. <laughs> but notice the transition. The, the early church fathers, they put, uh, they talked about these being symbolic as gold as being Christ's kingship, which makes sense to me if they were dropping, worshiping the eternal king and also for his purity, frankincense, and also myrrh. Myrrh was used for embalming. And in a symbolic way, at the presentation at his birth, they were signaling his death. He was born to die. We're born to live. He was born to die. And after he grows up, when he starts going into his ministry, he makes that very evident. It was no secret. Now, the disciples, they wanted to keep him going. You know what I mean? Well, he's got he's to wipe out Rome here, doesn't he? know what his purpose is for being here? The big picture they should have had. <laughs> they were looking at their little picture. Uh, so, the cross. Jesus goes to the cross years later, fulfilling the just requirements of his own law. That is, it must be paid for with perfection. Being that he's human and lived a perfect life as a human being, he satisfied the just requirements of the law. He who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. That's the transaction you want. Because he was man, he died on a cross. Because he was God, the payment for that sin, that righteousness that was banked to his account, is now placed into your account and my account when we put our trust in Christ. Paul put it this way. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes from faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. We get to the bottom of the text and we see that in here. Some of these saddest words in here. Did you notice, Mary? He came into the world that he had created and the world did not know him. He came to his own, the Jewish people, and they rejected him. They received him not. But it says, the next, in 12 says, but as many as who received him, and there's a little, for those who believed in him, his name 
He gave them the right to become children of God. <laughs> Whoa, children of God. That would be every believer who's come to faith in Christ. How do you come to faith in Christ? By believing in Jesus Christ and who he is. Who is he? He's the pre-existing son of God. He's e equal with the Father, co-eternal <laughs> with the Father. He took on humanity. He died on the cross. He was risen three days later from the dead. That's how we know that, we're, that his righteousness is satisfactory for us because the Father raised him from the dead. If, and when you remember when Jesus died on the cross, his last words, there were seven of them that are recorded. Johnny says, it is finished. And then he gave up. What was finished? He had completed the full work he came to do. You ever have a big job and you finish that puppy <laughs> and you just, <sighs> man, this is the biggest work that has ever been done, the biggest project ever undertaken, and every human being on the face of this globe should be celebrating the great work of God in Jesus Christ with exuberance and joy and wonder and praise and gratitude. Because there's no bigger job than the job of saving sinners who are under God's condemnation headed for hell that don't have a snowball's chance in a blast furnace. And God's great love and redeeming work in his son. What a gift. What a gift. And that's what, that's what givens about at Christmas should be, is reflective of. Notice I said reflective of. <laughs> Not directly representation. <laughs> Reflections of God's working in our hearts is we want to give. Why? Because God gave his greatest gift, his, his son, for our redemption. Ah, I'm going to review this kind of. There's a great poem, and it. it says, uh, I forget the Donaldson, I think the lady's name was. It says, uh, the hands that formed the flaming spheres and sent them spinning vast light years away from planet Earth has laid aside his robes of state, donned human likeness by the great in dignity of birth. Those hands responsive to love's plan that formed the God reflector man of dust and destiny. Those hands by man's fierce hate impaled brought life anew. God's plan unveiled upon Golgotha's tree. Those hands that thought it nothing strange to pucker up a mountain range or ladle out a sea are forming history's direction still and conforming this world and universe that will ultimately be totally to his will. <laughs> those hands, those hands are holding and molding God's people, you and me, transforming us and making us more like Jesus Christ to the praise of God's glory. <laughs> what a plan. <laughs> what a plan. What a plan. I like that. God reflector man of, of dust and destiny. What a marvelous work. Our great God, our great triune God. <laughs> God sends his son to save us. We respond by faith in his name, all of who he is. We respond like the shepherds right now. <laughs> oh, oh, Lord God Almighty. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy. Well, you say, well, that's kind of screwy. Oh, no. <laughs> if we really knew and really experienced the glory of God, it'd be a flat time all the time.
but to the praise of his glory. He, he, de he doesn't get picky with his people because of Christ. <laughs> and the merits of Christ, we can rejoice and be, and just, and we're growing. We're not stuck. Okay, God has the plan. Christ, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for doing this wonderful work. Thank you for saving us from our sins. No condemnation, now I dread. All that is in Christ, in him is mine. Now we're alive in him, our living head, and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold we approach the eternal throne and claim the crown in future <laughs> of Christ our own. In Christ Jesus, we are complete. I'm not waiting to be complete. I'm not, think, I'm not waiting for my checklist to come back. Well, you are 93.7%. I want a slam dunk, and you better have a slam dunk perfect, too. And I know I'm, I know I'm standing in Christ's righteousness. That's the law I'm banking on. God asked me this morning, Gary, what's your, what's your credentials for getting there? I said, I don't have any. <laughs> well, I don't have any. Don't have one. If you give me what I deserve, and I deserve it, not one thing I can ask for. Sorry. But, uh, no. But, Father, I know that you are a man of your word. You are an eternal God of your word. I've seen it reflected in other human beings imperfectly. But you are a perfect God, and you speak truth all the time. And you promised me that if I would put my trust in your son, Jesus Christ, he would bear all my sins and eternally be my representative. And is, isn't he at your right hand, Father? Oh, he's, he's my son. He's seated here. He ain't ever going to leave. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good until Christ banished the fog. You can't even think about it. He's eternal. It can't happen. So every believer who puts their trust in Christ is in good standing with God. And that should be a very Merry Christmas. If you don't, and if you don't know him, get into investigating it. Ask the Lord to open your heart. Because this new birth comes not by some tricky guy sitting up here trying to bang you one way or the other. It comes from God's illuminating work in your heart as to these truths being true and convincing you, drawing you. And I know he's working. I can't see it. He doesn't, he doesn't go through G. Beeman and say, what's your opinion on that, this, that? I said, Lord, I'm just a, I'm just a, a man. <laughs> and he says, Gary, you do your work. People, you do your witnessing. And God is going to do his work in human hearts. Thank you, Lord. Thank you very much. Grace and peace came through Jesus Christ. That's all I have this morning. Let's close in a word of prayer. Oh, Father, we're thankful that we can continue in your presence on the merits of Christ. Thank you for each brother and sister here. Thank you for the great Christmas season we've come through and also the, all the reminders of what you've done for us in Jesus Christ. We pray that you would continue to strengthen this church. Lord, that the, the praise of your glory would go forth, that there would be the fragrance of Christ that will extend out into the community, that, Lord, you would bless the witness of your people by drawing many into salvation and into growth in Christ. Lord, thank you that you're doing your work and you're going to continue to do it. Bless the leaders and the director, whoever's on the, on the, uh, the seminars, Lord. Strengthen, encourage, and guide them and uh, help them to come back, Lord refreshed by you and being a blessing to your people. Thank you for your faithfulness and thank you most of all, Father, for your Son who is our eternal Savior in whose name we pray. Amen. Foundation Bible Church Inconveniently located two blocks northwest of the Jamesville Athletic Club.